Hello and welcome back. We definitely got something different today. Now, strangely, this is uh, the wrong box for the model it contains. Uh, fairly tidy looking box. I'm very unsure of the dating of the model or the box, to be honest, but it's quite interesting pricing written on the box there. Uh, and the model, model store there seems to be in Paris. Um, I have looked that up, but it seems to be in an indoor shopping area. There's no uh, Google Street View, so it, it may still be there, it, it may not. But, <coughs> excuse my voice. So we'll lift off the lid. So al along with the wagons that we were having a look at today, this just comes under the heading of something beautiful, really. It doesn't, it's not really the start of uh, a whole new strain of collecting, but uh, the wagons came first and then this uh, came along as something to pull them with. I sought for a long time something suitable to pull those uh, car transporters with. But um, I settled on this initially, I think it is a passenger train, held a speed record, I think, in, in the late 50s. And as newer, newer locomotives came along, I think this was assigned to freight duty. So that's my thinking uh, between using it today. So it may be the wrong livery. And it may even be a completely wrong sort of locomotive to pull car transporters, but it's a it's a thing of beauty, so therefore it works today. So we'll just have a, a look over it. Now I have changed the couplings uh, to fit the, uh, the to pull the playcraft items around. It was initially fitted with these. I'll put these back on when I finish with it today. Um, but if we just have a look over. She's in a fairly nice condition. It's a heavy old coupling, isn't it? The, the lights do light up, they are directional. Nice, nice badge there, SNCF. And then we've got the, the class of loco in the, in the centre there, CC7107, or oh, that is that the locomotive number. I'm sure somebody will correct me on that, along with the date, please, if somebody knows it, can give me a, an accurate date. I think this is model number. Um, 8540 or 8541, possibly between 69 and the early 70s from from the uh, the light research I've done. But uh, fairly impressive looking thing. The pantographs, whilst they operate up and down, they don't collect current on this model. Um, and I think later versions of this model may well have had um, horn detail on either end of the cabs. And I think early versions of the model may have had a different bogey arrangement and underframe detail. Uh, so we'll just pop those back down again. Very gently. I do like the pantographs. Just look at that gearing underneath there. And it is just uh, something different than the, the Triang and the Triang Hornby models uh, that we've been looking at. And it's like a, a breath of fresh air, really. It's always nice to have a change, isn't it? But as I say, this isn't the start of a, a new collecting line. This is just a quite a pretty thing and I, I couldn't resist the car transporters and um, this just came along as something realistic to pull them with. So I've, I've got her on the rails and we'll just uh, put up the pantographs here and we'll see how how they look when they're up. See they don't quite make it up to the uh, the overhead, that they're not live anyway so you couldn't collect current for them, from them. I'll just pop that up there. So it looks a bit more impressive with those up, doesn't it? So it is the, uh, obviously not, not double O scale, it's uh, HO scale. So we'll just have a, have a look at that running on the layout. Now she, she does get on all right on the track, but um, she's not as happy on the rails as you might think. The, uh, the Playcraft wagons are certainly le less happy uh, whilst this uh, this model does work on the um, point work and so on, um, the Playcraft wagons are, are definitely unhappy on the point work. It's just a little bit hesitant on those diamond crossings, but makes the point work quite nicely, I think. No trouble at all in the second radius curve. Again, through there very well. Tiny bit extra friction here in the uh, first radius curves and then through points number seven. A little bit of a, a pause there through one of those points and again just a tiny bit of hesitation on the diamond crossing there. I think uh, 
a lot of the trying models do that as well, so we're not uh, unsurprised by that, I don't think. No shortage of power there, so I think uh, she's going to be an excellent puller up the incline there, smoothly way onto the suspension bridge. So we have the uh, directional lighting. So if I just uh, pop that one down and I'll, I'll pick that one up and we'll put the, reverse the direction of the motor. So that's a, a nice feature, isn't it? We'll just pick up the chassis and have a, a swift look over. Her. So I've got the, the motor there strapped in with this sprung clip. So fairly secure, no, no screw assembly holding it together. It's all sort of sprung together, just like the, the body workers through these little prongs here on this uh, steel chassis. And it just fits into corresponding holes on the, on the inside of the chassis there. If we just have a look there and there, it has a, a right and a wrong way. It will only go back together the one way, so I found, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so that's quite nice, isn't it? That it's got that sort of basic soldering there and a, and a proper light bulb in. So these just push into the the, uh, the clear clear glazing units at the front to supply the, the, the lighting down to the, uh, the lamp details. But what I find strange is it just requ it requires pure luck when reassembling the model to keep this wiring away from this, this drive assembly here, which I think is a little bit odd. I think I'm going to struggle with that, getting that back together so it doesn't uh, make a ticking noise and wear through the cabling. So you can see the motor there. It's sort of look like a magnet back here, I imagine. Nice heavy lead weight here. And I'm assuming that that's something to do with the, the control of the, the directional lighting. It's fairly heavy, heavy gauge wire here. And the bulb in the other end. And you see those pickups there. That's really fine, finely sprung there. And let's turn it over and have a look. You see the pickups going down onto the. Uh, let's see if we can get that into focus there onto the axle there. So I'm assuming there is some insulation at some point during this wheel assembly. So the the centre wheels are dummies and they they don't even rotate. They just sit above the track level. Again. They spin fairly freely, so I imagine keeping this area clean is going to be quite important. So we'll look further along, and there's that wonderful gearing assembly we saw when we had a look over the model a few moments ago. Traction tyres on all of the drive wheels. I don't have any replacements, so I'm hoping they'll hold out to see if I can find some on that uh, drive gear running right down through the bogey pivot there. Again, this is a this is a dummy here. Doesn't spin at all, but uh, the gearing sort of floats through through the assembly, as it were. So I think that's a, quite an interesting piece of engineering, isn't it? So I'll just have another swift look over, over this side here. Now I think we'll pop that down. It is fairly stiff. I think I mentioned quite heavy heavy gauge wiring. We'll just pop that down. I'm going to have a look at the uh, the inside of the bodywork here. There we go, fairly clean and tidy on the inside. The glazing seems to have either shrunk or buckled over the years. It does look like it's been glued in, although one of them is almost completely... No, it's this one. It did fall apart and drop out completely. There we go. When I uh, when I pulled, a, pulled the model apart, um, I can't get that out there. Fairly rough old piece of... Uh, Glazing unit there, yellowed slightly. Oh, I'll work on attaching that later. See the, the pantographs are just uh, fitted through the plastic work with a slight twist in the uh, securing prong there. Lovely pantographs, I think these are really are beautiful. It's a shame Tri and Hornby never made anything 
although in this style far, far more robust I'm sure these could have been um, adapted or taken on board to, to work on the EM2 perhaps, perhaps or the, the steeple cab lovely things I think but anyway very nicely secured on the underneath there you can see other securing prongs here for other, other pieces these are uh, these are insulators, I suppose, for this cabling here. Let's have a look. Very nice detail. A little bit of rubbing through the, uh, the lining around the windows there. And the metal handrails. Of course, we're getting too bogged down with the outside of the model again. And there is that uh, glazing unit, I think. Actually, you know, I'm wrong. The, the glazing unit for the, the cab is different than the, the lighting unit. Initially, I thought that was... Uh, all the one piece but it's not it's separate it's two separate parts uh, those buffers lovely buffers aren't they very fine and they just seem to be separately fitted plastic parts pushed into into the bodywork there so we'll just have a, a swift look along and it's the same deal at the other end you see the wire handrails there it's quite crudely done very hornby double o style isn't it the uh, hornby double o models have a great big fold overs for the wire handrails and so on so, a really pretty thing. I noticed when I was looking at that video footage back that my demonstration of the directional lighting it didn't really uh, show it to be directional, so have a look at this instead. And then the other direction. With that directional lighting you really have got to wind up the power a little bit to uh, get them to show whilst running on the rail that's not going to be practical once we're, we're pulling those car transporters i have the five of these and they're uh, all in these lovely playcraft boxes with uh, Really great graphics on them. Let's just have a look at this one. Accessories, manufactured in France exclusively for Playcraft Toys Limited, London. Really lovely boxes. So I'm not sure on the dating of uh, of these models um, in, the, in the Playcraft boxes. Let's just have a, have a look at that and then we'll swiftly look at the other end. Although Joef um, seems to have had this model as a new model in one of their catalogs I've seen online in uh, 67 and I believe it ran through till 2001 um, sometimes available with eight sometimes ten cars and also available without any load at all and I believe uh, Lee Mott and River Rossi may have since uh, made a version of this as well but I'm a little more unsure on that so we'll just extract that from the box again they're very lightweight let's get that out there then that's either a good thing or a bad thing let's pop that the box down there and then uh, we'll just have a, a swift look over the model now uh, each of mine has uh, has eight cars with it and uh, when I bought them the, the cars were all in the bag along with the boxes so it was a, it was a job lot really um, it was a, a price too good to turn down really and uh, I thought they were just such pretty things that would with, with the vehicles on them as well um, but uh, I have to say, ever since I bought them, they've just sat in the boxes. Um, I think we've all done things like that. I think, oh, we must have that. And we, we buy it and perhaps it just stays in a drawer or the box. And you think, well, I'll do that with it one day and, and you never do it. So I thought I'd run these. And I never got around to get anything to run it with. So there is uh, lovely detail. I've just been moving around the model there as we've been to been talking and now we've got uh, Joe F and Made in France his lovely uh, bolts in the bottom there so we have a, a, a pl plastic wheels and a metal axle on that uh, center articulated bogey there and we have a, a nice metal ones at, at either end and that's that's why I changed the, the coupling on the locomotive to run these today so there's plenty of printed detail along the edges these which makes them quite interesting they've definitely seen a bit of life there's a bit of wear and tear to the uh, the paintwork on these models 
I'm having trouble getting light on the inside for you to see the decks, but there is tracking in there for the, the car tires to run down. That's quite interesting stuff, detail in there. Now these are quite fragile, these, uh, these little ramps on the end. One of them has uh, sadly um, came off, strained my hand when I tried to do that. It just snapped straight off, so we're going to have to have some glue on that at some stage, I imagine. So I don't think these were made so you could drive vehicles from one, one, one car to the other, perhaps. You could certainly drive the vehicles across there, look, in that articulated area when they were being loaded. So that's a, a loading ramp at the one end and you can drive right along the train. Now this ramp here does go up and down. So let me see if I can just ease that to, down. It's quite, quite rough. It goes down and sort of click stops quite crudely down the edge there. So. You know, there, there, there could be a lowered ramp at the end there. So lots of added play value, although, although I think with the uh, the quality of materials used to manufacture these, it, they won't take that much playing with it, if you get what I mean. So uh, they really are pretty things to look at, but they are quite lightweight. You see the distortion in this fencing here is quite, quite bad. E each of the models suffers to that to a certain extent. But uh, as I say, I was quite taken with them, and I think possibly it's the uh, the, uh, the the cars as well when they're on just make them look such such beautiful things. A great ladder at the end there as well. So I'm just going to pop that down, and we'll have a, um, a look at the cars. So they're in a variety of colours, and uh, I love the love the red wheels. So have a, have a look over that. Some of them have painted headlamps and tail lamps, and, and some don't. So really lovely. See if we can get the, the focus back on that there. I think that's got uh, red painted tail lamps on it. I'm going to have a look on the, on the underside of that. Now my French pronunciation isn't very good, is it? Uh, Dina? Diane? You'll have to excuse me on that. I'm sure somebody will, will, will be able to let me know the correct pronunciation of that. So we'll pop that one down. And again, another gorgeous colour. Just have a look at that. A little bit of muck on that, that there. This one's got the, the headlamps painted in in silver, which I think is quite smart. So quite quite high uh, production cost, I imagine, to have that done. I wonder whether it's a, a machine process or somebody's just touched it, all of those with a paintbrush. Or maybe it's been done post-factory, perhaps. I don't know. So we'll just have a look underneath there. Arond, perhaps. Again, excuse the pronunciation. So we'll pop that one down. So we've got this lovely bright red one there. Red wheels, they don't, not so much contrast on that, is there, when they, when you've got the uh, the red wheels, silver headlamps, a lovely grill, look at that. What a motor car, that is uh, truly something, isn't it? Let's uh, see what that one's got written on the bottom of it, bottom of it sorry. Uh, 203, I know 203 is as, as a Peugeot perhaps, so perhaps that's an early Peugeot. I think from looking online, these cars seem to be from the uh, the late 50s from what I can see. They, they seem to be modelled in, in that sort of period. Again, that gorgeous yellow colour with the, the red wheels, isn't it? It uh, really is quite something. A little bit of muck on the corner there could benefit from uh, a bit of a clean perhaps. What have we got on there? Ariane. Lovely, lovely colours. And we've got a, a grey. It's got to be a Citroen, a DS, hasn't it? That beautiful thing with the, the red wheels on that. DS19, made in France. Like a spaceship. Beautiful motor cars, those. So I'll we'll pop that down. And then we've got this uh, lovely white vehicle here with the red red wheels on it. Really stands out, doesn't it? Silver headlamps. Really excellent thing. Let's have a look on the, the underside of there. And a, a 403. Lovely thing, that dry shaft detail as well, some of these models have. Really quite beautiful things. And there they go, under the elevated section there terrific altogether. I think that's what I had in mind when I bought these. I thought they would just look quite, quite a stunning sight together and I think they do. 
Uh, what I hadn't really thought about when I bought them, I suppose, was um, how they would run on my uh, track work, and they're not very happy. Um, I'm not going to show any running through points and from inside to outside line. They are uh, they de derail at the drop of a hat, shall we say. The couplings have all needed to be dressed upwards a little bit. They hang a little bit low and tend to um, clip on the point work and the diamond crossing, so they've all been adjusted to allow them to run nice and smoothly like this. Uh, the wheel flanges um, are a, a profile which doesn't really suit this track work and encourages, it, encourages them to uh, rise up over the rails as, as the friction develops along the, the length of the train, which, uh, which causes derailment. So the first radius curve is, is not really successful at all, but I think uh, given all of that, they, they do look terrific. And I suppose it was a bit optimistic that I think they, they might run smoothly. On a, on a layout such as it, or such as this, sorry. But uh, thanks again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else to look at. Goodbye now.